I'm going to review the PDVS2 Mini, which is 0 to 10 volt reference. So stick around, check it out if you're interested in this thing. This is going to be pretty interesting, especially with a volt nut. If you're a volt nut, you'll be interested in this, definitely. You might see my other gear here. This has been sent to me by another YouTuber. He's actually bigger than me, he's got, he's got a bigger channel than me. Well, he's got more subscribers than me, I think I've got more videos than he has. By quite a, quite a bit actually, but he does some good videos. I'm subscribed to his channel obviously. And he's quite well known. He's got a new project which he's working on. And this is what's in this box here. Now, the YouTuber is Ian Scott Johnston. In Johnston.com. I'll chuck a link down below in the description and stuff like that. This is the PDV S2 Mini production prototype. Right, this is a brand new thing from Ian. So I just made it. I'm one of the first people to get one. There's a few other YouTubers as well that have got them. Um, I think it did a batch of four as the prototypes, and I have one of the prototypes. I believe xdevs.com ten. I believe he also has one, and so does SDG Electronics. Um, other two other YouTube channels you should definitely check out if you're not familiar with them. They've also been um, given some of these to look at. So I'm one of the lucky few. So thank you very much, Ian. That's brilliant for being generous. And so it's a prototype, so it's about me trying it out and, and seeing what I think of it and maybe um, coming up with any ideas and things for improvements if there's anything. But I suspect that that's not going to be the case. I, I'm pretty sure that Ian would have done an excellent job as always. So I'd be really surprised if I find any problems with this or anything I think could be improved. I very much doubt that. At least I know it's put a lot of effort to this. And it's basically a lower cost version of the PDVS2, which is a DC voltage reference. And this is a DC voltage reference as well, but it's a lower cost version. It, it costs a lot of money to develop that sort of thing, and actually, and the parts alone could be quite expensive. And this is why it's called the Mini. Should I read the instructions? Should I turn it on? Ooh. What to do? What to do? Mm. Okay, let's get it opened up. Now this has got a different design to his previous one. It's like a simplified interface. Um, this is also part of the cost saving. And I'm, the Mini's got a simpler interface with push buttons instead. And it's got the standardized jacks there. And it has an internal battery. So as you can see down here, this is version 1, so it's his very first one, there's a little logo there, he's got Johnson's logo, pretty cool logo he's got there. And there's his web address, just there, you can just see it there, he's zoom in on that a bit more. IanJohnson.com, go and check him out. And prototype 2D, so he knows which one's which. So he's got records and everything, and he'd have um, calibration information, that sort of stuff as well. And so there's a charger port that's there, he's got a built-in charger. So it takes one of these batteries which I purchased previously. Yeah, I'm going to have a play around with it first before I do a cool video of me playing around with it so I don't look like a complete dumbass trying to figure it out. So, charger cable, which I'll need. And, and calibration data, here we go. That's the first thing. These are the cow values. Now, because it's got a different DAC, it's a high resolution DAC, but I think it had more noise. So, though, so you could get a better level of precision in some instances, but comparatively to his, to his other PDVS2. So it does 0 volts to 10 volts DC. Freeze it or something. So accuracy and stability down to microvolt stability. So I actually intend to use this to compare with my DC calibrators and stuff like that. My own DC sources that I have and do a comparison because this has been just you know recently calibrated it's brand new he calibrated it like two weeks ago and had it on soak test obviously for a week I think as well just to make sure it's all right good and it says the instruction how to use it information so this is just preliminary instructions so I expect that this will change or be refined as time goes by um, but I think it's just a you know, really good starting point it tells you how to use it Calibrations, you can actually recalibrate yourself if you need to. Now, I know it's been calibrated, I think it's on a is it eight and a half digit meter, I think he's calibrated on already. And some more information, last page there. So, um, the specs on his website, the proper specs, will tell you all about it. So, if you're interested in this, then go and check out the site. 
Um, there we go. That's the full shape for my for my particular unit here. So this is the digital calibration points. This is the set voltage, and that's the actual voltage. And because it's digital to analog, you're going to get um, some rounding and stuff like that, and off slight offsets and that sort of thing. But as long as you know what you're going to get at that voltage set point, then you're fine. And these are so sort of calibration data. So if I, for some reason, if I lost the memory on this or something like that, or somehow messed it up because I was pushing the wrong buttons and mashing stuff, then at least with the information here, I could recalibrate and put it back to original. And this is calibrated. Not long ago, so 11th of August. So that was some, a week ago, basically. And the temperature is 24 degrees final. So it's all good. So I'll be playing around with this and I'll do some more video on this after I've got into it and figured out how to use it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ian. Ian does some amazing work. So I'm very pleased to be one of the people who's chosen to, you know, let, let us play around with these things. So, and at no cost too. It didn't cost me anything. It was sent to me for free. Even better. Very generous. Okay, so I've just taken the uh, cover off this thing to get inside to put the batteries in. It holds two batteries. So it's actually got these really nice battery holders in there. Look at the side of it. It's beautiful in there. Inside there, black PCB. Look at that. That looks really nice. And we've got this in here as well. Built in fuses. This is to be the charger section as well. I know you, you um, had the charger as a separate thing you added onto it. So you could do charging as well. It's, like it's got it's a plug in module there. But yeah, that looks beautiful. Very nice. There you go, battery's installed. This thing, it looks, looks beautiful. It looks really nice. Ian does a wonderful job. I have to say. Excellent. Anyway, I'm just going to put all this back together. So I need to put these standoffs back on. Now he's got the standoffs on stuff on here, so it's got some airflow around it a little bit there. So that's why he's got perforated holes and stuff in here. So that when it's got charging running, it doesn't overheat. Because um, yeah, obviously, you know, temperatures are quite critical and things like this. Got to be very um, temperature stable. And so it's allowed for that kind of thing to allow for the charge, it doesn't affect the circuitry. So it's done a lot of work on that apparently. I'm trying to make sure it's as good as possible. And once this, these things are installed, you know, the bunch of batteries are in there because they're rechargeable. I shouldn't actually really have to go in there again. This should be it. Now, mustn't over tighten these. Just so it starts to grab and then stop. All done. Should we try and power it up, see if it's got any power in these batteries? Oh, look at that. 14 point, well, 15 volts, so yeah, these batteries are pretty flat, since there's two of them. But yes, nice, okay. How do I turn this plug There we go. So I better get this in charging up. Better hook this up. This has been provided to me for free by Ian Johnston. In Johnston.com, as you can just see at the bottom of the, the PCB there. Make sure you go and check out the site, there'll be links down below in the description. Just go and have a look. Um, this is a product which he will be selling soon. This is a prototype, all right? So, it's, it's a prototype D2, well, 2D rather, all right? So, this is just one of his initial prototypes for testing purposes. And he sent one to me and he sent one to a couple of other YouTubers as well um, for us to try out and just play around with and see what we think of them. and so we can find little quirks or bugs which might need to be fixed in the final revision, that sort of thing. So, let's say it's a battery powered unit. You can put two uh, lithium batteries in there. It takes 9 volt batteries. Well, the kind of 9 volt batteries anyway. It's that package style, PP3 style batteries. Um, Ian does actually list the types of batteries he recommends on his website. As well as links to the actual batteries he recommends. So I picked up some from AliExpress, and they seem to be working fine anyway. But it gives you a voltage, a voltage readout here. I think it can work down to about, I think it was 
12 or 30 volts, I could be wrong there, something like that anyway. And say so it's a 0 to 10 volt reference, and you can see it's got five decimal places. That's because it's a 20 bit reference. So if I turn it off, turn it back on again, 20 bit. Alright, so software version 1, so there may be some revisions like to this later on. It's a really nice little unit, it's a really great reference. Now you see I've got a bit of an advantage here I suppose, compared to some people. I've got a Fluke 343A DC voltage calibrator, and I've got my Fluke 5.5 digit meter here. Now the reason I've got this out is because this thing here, it's 5.5 digits, but it's a pretty accurate meter this one here, I quite like this one, it's a nice device. It's a well burnt in meter, right? It's very old and it's very stable and consistent. So, this is like my favourite reference meter for I'm doing checking. Ignore the reading on display because it's not plugged into anything, it, it just like displays the last thing it read, kind of. Right? So, don't worry about that right now. And we'll go through this and we'll plug it in. I'll do some comparisons with this and show you how good this is compared to this professional Fluke DC calibrator. Now, this accuracy of this unit. Is not 100%. I know it's close, but it's not 100% because this is a unit which I picked up a few years ago now and repaired. I needed recapping, basically. Anyway, I can't trust this calibration completely on this. It's going to be close, but it's not going to be perfect. So I'm just aware of that. This isn't calibrated, not officially. It's just done with what I had around. Okay, so this is still going to be pretty close though. So this is great for side by side comparisons and everything. I trust this thing here more than I trust this and more than I trust this, and more than I trust the signal at 6.5 digit meter. Reason being, this has been calibrated on an 8.5 digit multimeter. Right, so Ian's calibrated this on the Agilent, um, is it 3458A I think it is. So what is calibrated it to is, is actually beyond the resolution of what you see on the screen here. Okay, so it gives you some idea of, of the position that's in there, as far as calibration points. This is like a cheaper version of the unit he already makes. He makes a 0 to 10 volt reference already. Now the difference between this one and the other one, the one he already produces and sells is the other one's got a lower bit resolution, it's got a lower I and L. So this is 20 bits, so it's got high resolution, but it's also got a higher I and L. So it means it requires more calibration points. So instead of um, calibrating you know, a few points as far as calibrations on the other unit, but he does 11 calibration points on this 0 to 10 volts, one you know, at each volt point. So he's trying to get, he's calibrated several points on this thing. And that data is all here on the sheet as well, which I'll show you in a second. So this is the actual calibration record of this particular unit. These are the actual dis the calibration value he puts in, and these are the voltage it was reading at these set points. Now this is on his Agilent 8.5 digit modem. You can see the precision down here. That's six decimal places down there. So six decimal places with two leading digits, eight digits possible. That's the level of calibration detail he's got in there. All right, so it's actually one digit more than what you get on display. Okay, and that's kind of what you'd expect anyway. You know, you want something the calibration to be beyond what's actually usable on there. And I'll show you this anyway in a second. It's, it shows very, very accurate in this tracking and the, uh, the resolution it does. So actually, I was really wanting this as a transfer standard so I can use this to actually check against my own equipment to see how close it is. Yeah, I certainly do trust this thing. So it's battery powered, and it has a built-in charger, integrated charger, so you just plug a little charge cable in, which I've got here somewhere. There we go, it's a little cable which it supplies with. And so this plugs in there, and you charge it up. He recommends you don't use it whilst it's charging, because the cost of the, um, oh, not the camera, the charging circuitry does introduce a little bit of heat into the unit, which is also why he's got this gap here, right, it's like an air gap. So he's trying to allow any build-up of heat out He's done a lot of work on this apparently, so it doesn't get too hot and that sort of stuff. And he's done, he's, he's got current limiting and that sort of stuff on the charging circuitry. It doesn't take long to charge anyway. That's not really a problem because you can see changes in the output readings when it's on charge versus when it's not on charge. It does recommend you just use it off the battery only for more consistent readings. Control-wise, you've got an enter button here. You've got left, right, up and down. All right, so if you want to change, so currently set zero volts. You know, there's one volt there, two volts. Alright, if I change a digit, just go to the right, you can change that one. Alright, and you've got left conversely as well. Alright, um, if you do like that, some of that, you could go down on that digit or go back to zero. It does have menus in there and stuff as well for calibration. So if I hold this button down, there's the calibration menu stuff. Left is settings. 
So you can see the various set points and stuff on here for what you want to do for battery shutdown, you know, charging limits, that sort of stuff. Um, I did tweak it very slightly here, this maximum full milliamps. I made that slightly lower. It was 75 originally at default. I dropped down to 60. This seemed to set my batteries a bit better. And you can just scroll through this thing. Go through each one. And then I have to do exit no save. And I think I have to do is it right to exit. Yeah, there we go. And right is calibration. This is where you can change the calibration data. Now, I haven't played any of this stuff. I haven't even looked at it before. It's first time I've actually gone in here. So you can see the counts set here. So you can adjust that count value there to adjust the calibration point for the voltage that's set. Now, obviously, I haven't played with this at all. I'm not intending to play with this at all. It's best I keep well alone. <laughs> all right. So we'll go down. Oh, that's going through each one, stepping through each calibration point. So it shows all, all the details, the actual set points for each voltage there. So if you need to recalibrate at some point in the future, you can do that. Go right through, exit, no saving. That's what I want. And we'll get back out of there. And that's back to the original. Right, so that's the menu system that's inside there. Right, I'm going to demonstrate how all this thing works now. It does have some little quirks in there. Whether it's the environment I'm in, whether it's a case of EMI interference affecting the, the really low level readings, whether it just needs a bit more tweaking in the firmware, I'm not quite sure. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second and I'll show you what I mean. Now, Ian recommends that you actually have this thing laying flat. That's what he's designed. So it lays flat like this when you're working on it. And actually, because otherwise you get heat traveling up the board and it's all calibrated that way because it's got ventilation holes down this end and that sort of stuff. So he recommends it lays down. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to have it standing up so you can see the screen. Okay, so bear that in mind. It is supposed to be laid flat. So I'm going to null this meter off. There you go. So if I do one volt on here, one volt. Two volts. Let's go through these and I'll show you the individual steps as well. And I'll show you what I've found, which is probably more of interest to Ian. I, Ian hasn't seen this yet himself. I've tried to describe it via email to him, um, but obviously it's not quite the same level of um, easy understanding if you're trying to convey something by text rather than a video. Video can show it. But you can see my fluke here is going basically bang on all the way up. Okay, which is why I trust this meter, because it's a really good meter accuracy. I trust the output of this. I believe this is very good. So, as I said, it's done its calibrations on an 8.5 digit multimeter. You know, a 3458A, I believe it was. So, I really do trust the output of this as being very precise. Within reason, obviously, you've got to be in the right environmental um, aspects here. Okay. Now, my current circumstance here is I'm at 23.2 degrees Celsius and 45% humidity. Right, those things matter. So it's 24 degrees when you do the calibration. So I'm very slightly colder. That may or may not affect it. But as you can see, I'm getting basically bang on. They agree. If I, I'll just come down to one volt range because I get more resolution on the meter here. Okay, so it's one volt. If I change by hundreds of millivolts, you'll see that this will change by hundreds of millivolts. All right. And you can see it's accurate. Each step is the same. Okay. And if I do by tens of millivolts, same deal. Goes up by tens. Each step is accurate. Okay. Do by individual millivolts. And again, it's accurate okay and we do by 100 microvolt steps okay and again it's all looking pretty accurate now so I do have EMI noise in this room I do know that I do have Wi-Fi running in here and a lot of electrical like 50 Hertz hum that sort of stuff comes through things so I'm very aware that at trying to make very low voltage measurements or any kind of low measurements that EMI noise in this room can cause problems now this seems pretty good, I'm using this Pomona cable here um, so it's a probably nice high quality lead 
Now let's do 10 microvolt steps. Now this is obviously what the, the bottom of resolution is made at this scale. Right, but it's there and it is going up. WS is reading about point well, it's reading basically two counts higher. Right, so yes you can change by that amount. Okay. This. You see my nulling here is drifted off slightly, that's why it's reading slightly high. That's pretty good there, it's like this is where I'm getting this interesting effects. Now if I come down here do milli oh, 100 millivolt steps below 1 volt so I'm getting a slight difference here now All right, so it's 985 200 millivolts just three just ranged of course it is <laughs> go on, pick a range no, let's go 300. 300 is like bang on, okay? 400, bang on. 500, bang on, alright? So, those are all looking alright. So, I'm trying to get this to scale. There you go, 2 volts, no, 0.2 volts, sorry. No, it says bang on there. And 0.1, it says reading slightly low there, alright? But this only happens below that voltage threshold. So, it's like maybe it's EMI noise in the area. Maybe it's affecting it, maybe it just needs a bit another calibration point at this low voltage range. It does seem to be slightly worse down here. Now I'm getting the same difference on this as I am my Siglent. Both my meters are agreeing that it could probably use another calibration point. You know, 200 is looking pretty good, right? And 300 is bang on, right? So I think it's just something right down this very bottom end could use a bit more calibration. Um, so the calibration point is 0 volts and 1 volt. So it should be fairly linear anyway, but it's to do with the INL of the device which is used in there. Ian does say what that is on his website. So if I go down to 10 millivolt steps, you can see 0 volts, I'm getting 0 volts here. So 9.89, 9.88 or so. And then 9.7. So that's a bit of a difference between those two. Okay, But it's only at these very low voltages. Um, and that's changed again slightly more. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's changed slightly. Okay, so I don't know if it's for my environment or if it's just a slight calibration tweak that's required in the firmware for this. And it's fairly consistent, but not perfect. So there is some variation here. But if I go to a higher voltage, Back to one volt range again, All right? So there's one volt there, base reference. And I go up by 100 on each one of these, or 10 on each one of these. Sorry, you'll see that each one is pretty much perfect. This one's a fraction lower, but they're pretty much the same all the way up, with a great deal of consistency compared to what I've got at that lowest range. So it's as though it needs another calibration point right down the bottom there. So I'm sure Ian will look at that in time. So this is the prototype. This is for me to try out and and see if I can break it, really. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of the prototypes, to try and see what fine, further refinements are needed. Okay, so what I'm showing is a slight error on that very low range. In my case, whether it's this meter being a bit funny, whether it's EMI, causing some weird reading anomalies wherever it's just that this is um, because it's such a low voltage output on that particular section it's causing problems potentially um, with calibration I need more reference points for the calibration at these lower levels All right and if I'm doing one millivolt steps you go 987 98 there 988 991 All right see that one's got a slight difference that was about three difference. 97 okay and then 93 and then 9289 all right so you can see there's some steps there so it may just be my environment I really can't tell you I can't give you a a certain reason for that you know yeah 
one, two, three, looking pretty good there. Right, no, I don't think I'm going to change for one millivolt. <laughs> All right, so there it's okay, let's do 100 microvolts. Those are also consistent. There's a slightly over there on the 52. That one's slightly out. Not much. Okay. So on these ranges, if it's above a certain level, it seems fine. So we go back down to 200. Uh, actually, go down to 100 again. That scales down, gives you more accuracy. And. Um, Right down to zero again. So that's eight four there, eight nine, that's changed by five, eight seven, eight six, nine oh. So there is some difference where it's floating around just in this lower range. So I think that's something you can probably address with, with um, the software side of things. I don't think I have to do any hardware changes for that. It's probably just a case of adding a couple more calibration points below 100 millivolts or something like that. Maybe a 100 millivolt calibration point, a 50 millivolt calibration point, something like that. Maybe that'll do it. Um, I, I'm speculating. I don't know. Ian's the, the real expert. He's done some amazing work on this thing. And um, this is the only thing I've found is that at this very low voltage levels, there's a little bit of non-linearity. Okay. And if I do this, try and do the same thing using my fluke instead. All right. So if I do <coughs> one millivolt steps on the, on the fluke. you'll see the linearity on here is pretty much right all the way up okay give you an idea of the difference all right so that's kind of what you should be seeing on on this unit with the linearity if i do 100 microvolt steps actually i should know this out first and i still know so it's a bit more sensible on the microvolt steps and you can see they're pretty much exactly the same every single step which shows that the difference is a slight quirk on this right, but again it's only that's the idea of a prototype is you try these things out and you see what needs refinement and what can be improved upon um, so above that, I don't know, probably was it 300 millivolts or something. Maybe it might even be 200 millivolt range. Above that, it's it's absolutely fine. And I'm not a metrology guy. I'm, this isn't what I do at all. Um, I just have a few bits and pieces I've clicked over the time and and trying to figure things out and have decent measurements. Okay. So yeah, if I do 10 again, should go up to 9 again. All right. So. The steps on this are very linear. The steps on this at the low voltage isn't very linear. Again, it's only really minor. If I go back onto this, let's just try it in the 200 millivolt range, shall we? Those no, courses three range, so I might go down to 199. Right, we'll try it on here again. So let's go by one millivolt steps. see those are very consistent you know, they're not perfect but they're very very consistent lots of slight variations there let's do 100 microvolt steps and you see there we get into slight variations of a few counts it's not a huge difference, but it's a few counts. And that may matter to you, it may not. Okay. 
so yeah, it's only these really low levels. So anyway, Ian will see this video, and I'm sure he'll comment on it and uh, make some adjustments to improve those little details there. You know, if I go five volts, for example, on here, you know, <laughs> bang on five volts. I've only got four different places in this meter, so let's go by that one. There we go. One, two, three. Right. On here, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> All right. I've done the same kind of measurements on my signal multimeter as well, and it's getting very similar results. The signal is actually need, needed calibration, as I found out. It's drifted off slightly with age, so I need to get that calibrated. I'm working on it at the moment, trying to get that sorted out. Although I don't have an eight and a half digit multimeter to calibrate against, which is a bit of a shame. That's kind of what it's supposed to have is an eight and a half digit multimeter to calibrate against for my signal. But uh, anyway, so yeah, you can see it's very good. So when it comes to charging, which I've just plugged in to do, it's it didn't need charging. I'm just doing it anyway. Top it up before I put it away. All right, I've got it charging right now. I've got my voltage set for 17.4 volts coming in. Those are showing 17.2, but it probably is this. I don't trust the meter on the power supply. So you can see I've got it powered in, plugged into charge, and the reading on the output is still exactly 5 volts. But then I'm using a linear power supply. If I increase the voltage, um, let's go to you know, 18 volts, there's no physical difference really. It means, I don't know, I flicked the one decimal then. So maybe it is a slight thing there, but Ian does say that when you've got a power supply, if you're trying to charge it, you can't completely rely on the output from this because it will drift because of the heat generated during charging. Okay. Um, apparently it will go up to like 20, I think it's 18 to 24 volts, I think is what Ian recommended for the charging. Um, if I do 22 volts there, you can see 22 volts on display there and charging, and there's the current just going into the charge batteries up. And as it's charging, you'll see that I'll drop down. Okay. And as you can see, the output isn't really changing. You know, it's still pretty much there. Again, I've got EMI stuff going on. I've turned the power supply on now, so I've probably got some EMI from the power supply in itself. But you can see it's not really changed that much. It's still doing 5 volts. Alright, so. Um, although it ends, I say, use it off the batteries only. Don't use it off the charger. And I completely understand why. You know, in a pinch, if you need to quickly check something, obviously you have to warm up period of this thing. Um, then you could do it, I suppose. But if I unplug that, again, no difference. I was flicking at this one anyway. If I turn the power supply off, and it stabilizes. It's probably a bit of EMI from the power supply, entirely possible. Um, or it could be even be wiggling these cables around because that will have an effect moving cables that can affect readings. But yeah, so I thought I'd show you that. that Plug it in isn't the end of the world, but it's recommended against doing that. Um, it does say to just run off batteries. And also then, if you've got a power supply coming in, you could potentially introduce noise into the unit, which you don't want to do because it's supposed to be measuring, you know, generating precision voltages. Um, you know, if you've got a power supply which isn't completely clean, you will introduce noise into it, at least if you're off a battery, you're not going to have noise in there from the very source, at least. So here's in Johnston's website, injohnston.com, as you can see up here in the top. This has got like a little blog page he does where he's done various repairs and things like that going there. I think we have to wait a minute. I should have already looked at this before. Okay, there we go, it's loaded. This is the PDVS2, which you currently sells. And this is the PDVS2 Mini, which is what I'm currently showing you right now. Okay, so there's a 70, was it 79 pound price difference at the current time? And they're very similar units in the fact that what I do is similar, but he's tried to build this one down to a budget and try and keep it good position, but at a lower cost. It's trying to reduce the cost. So this has got some, the PDVS2 has got some benefits over this one because it's got direct entry keypad and stuff like that. But um, this is the one we're looking at here. So let's go in there and have a look. It's not currently available to buy. It will be available soon once it's finished revising the design and getting things tweaked based on the feedback he gets from myself and a few other people who sent these too. And probably this video too, now is actually be able to see what I'm, I'm seeing as well from the video, as far as how it behaves. Now you see the information about it here. So it does 10 microvolt steps, as I kind of showed you anyway. 20, 20 bit DAC. So it's smaller, more affordable sister to the PDVS2. And it's a handheld position voltage also, obviously seeing already. 
information here about the INL stuff like that. So it uses the Max 5719A, which is 20, 20 bit DAC. So integral non linearity. That's what I'm trying to say. INL. Integral non linearity. You should get this right. Non linearity means the readings in the DAC aren't as precise in each step. All right. Um, which is why it requires more calibration points. And there's information about it here. So it's using the LM. 309AH reference, which is a 0.5 ppm per degree reference. Um, so those are the main points about that. Using that mega microcontroller for the processor. So make sure you go and read this page properly and have a good look at it. So load 3 kilo minimum. The testing I've been doing, I have to say, I haven't been using a load. I've been loading it down, so it's been completely open circuit, so I haven't actually used the load on it. It's still working on a very spec, like 12 month typical drift. He doesn't know yet because it's not been around for 12 months, so he hasn't actually had one to measure. So that's still in progress. Yeah, so it's sort of 10 minutes to an hour. Stabilizing time. Yeah, it depends on what your ambient environment is like. And information about the batteries and stuff like that. And firmware would be available. He will recalibrate them. Information about the batteries and charging here. So you get about sort of 12 to 14 hours runtime out of the batteries. Which should be adequate for most things, I'd say. And various photos there. And that's what the inside looks like. Well, I showed another section of video. So I think he's done a really nice job on this. And here's some information about the actual testing he's done. Of various logging and temperatures and effects of charging and, and uh, running at the same time, that sort of thing. Um, here we go. That's what I'm looking for here. See? This is when he plugged it into charge. It's here. You can see how the effects of the putting it on charge affects some of these readings. So he puts it on charge and these ones come up a little bit. And here again as well. So you can see that charging does affect the output reading. Which is why he says to re he recommends just running off battery if you're trying to do actual testing at the time. But it's only, you know, you're talking about a really small amount. These are the resolutions down here. It's not changing by much. We're talking about there 10 microvolts. Across this range here, it's like 10 microvolts across that range. I think that's what it is. Hold on. Millivolts, microvolts, 10 microvolts. From there, yeah, it's about 10 microvolts range across there with that charging. So it's not a huge change. There we go. So go and check them out. So thanks a lot, Ian, for supplying me this unit and let me have a play around. And hopefully, you can get some information out of this video. Tell me what I'm doing wrong <laughs> or, or, um, or, get some ideas about things to tweak the bottom end there. I could be doing something wrong. It's entirely possible. But I should actually go back and look at the loading and try adding loading on that bottom end and see if it fixes those um, step errors. Don't forget to go and check out Ian's website. So, excellent. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See you next time. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon and watch this other video or anything else I've been playing around with. Give us a thumbs up and share the video. Especially this. Share this thing. People want these. They're cool.